Will you pray with me? Wow. Lord Jesus, thank you for humbling yourself on our behalf. You did something that no one else could have done. You are truly a unique and divine king. As we look into the humble beginnings of your life, Lord, let us remember how you alone are positioned to be the Savior of mankind. Thank you for rescuing us from the penalty of sin and all that brings us joy. Lord, we are yours. Give us this day your word that we might be able to celebrate the joy that comes with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, welcome back. Welcome back to New Beginnings Church, Advent week number three. Week number three. I am so thankful that you have decided to join us here today, either in person or online, uh, and tuning in. This is what we do. This is what we do. This is where we are. We are celebrating the advent of our Lord Jesus Christ. Advent means the coming, the, the birth, okay? So we are celebrating. Advent is the four weeks that lead up to the birth of Jesus Christ. We celebrate that on December 25th every year. We've Come to call that Christmas. Right now, we as a church, we're in this series called A Christmas Playlist, which gives a, a, a bit of a twist to the traditional Advent series. Now, now we are studying faith, hope, love, you know, the, the, the traditional um, uh, Advent themes this week being joy. And we're studying those, but, but we're incorporating several of our favorite hymns, you know, the, the Christmas songs that we sing all the time, some of which we've, well, all of the which so far we've been singing here. So hopefully you've known some of the songs that we've talked about, the first Noel and Away in a Manger, right? Remember the, uh, Joe brought us the news, uh, the good news of Jesus Christ, right? The first Noel, the first news, and it was the, the good news that Jesus is born, right? And then last week we talked about Away in a manger. Today, we are diving into joy to the world. So, I, I'm going to ask you a question here. This is kind of a rhetorical question, I guess, if you want. Is there anyone here today that could use some more joy and some more good news in your life? Right? Everybody out there in, in YouTube land out there is uh, raising their hands as well so first thing um it was uh, beth that read the psalm this morning that but i want to read it again because i think it's important for you to hear these words of joy as brought to us by king david oh sing to the lord a new song for he has done marvelous things his right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. That is so awesome. David is out there. And you know, if you know anything about the life of David, but he had mood swings, didn't he? He was, he was like sad and depressed and then, you know, one minute and then he became like super joyful and happy and excited the next minute, you know. And you can even read in some of these psalms, you'll see both, right? So this is like, hey, God is awesome. This is really great. I'm excited. You're excited. We all should be excited because God is awesome. And But other times, he's like really down in the dumps, you know? But what he does is he turns those psalms of lament into praise. 
he, he gives it all to God. And if he doesn't do so within the psalm itself, he does so within the, the it's called the Psalter, the group of psalms together. And so he does this on a regular basis. And he turns this weeping, this sadness into joy. And why does he do that? Why does, how does he do that, right? No, no matter what is going on in his life, he can turn that toward, toward God, right? And what he does is he just says, hey, God, I need you. I need you in my life. I know you're there. I know that you're with me. And so what I want to do is I want to turn this all over to you. And that's what he does. He turns it all over to God. And in this wonderful psalm of of praise, we get a case of resounding joy by King David. Don't we? Oh, it's just beautiful. So this morning, we sang the song, Joy to the World, And we celebrate the fact that as the song says, the Lord is come. The Lord is come. In other words, the Lord Jesus came to the earth. The Son of God came to the earth in the form of a child, in the form of a baby, being born like a normal, average, everyday, well, in in, in biblical times, birth, right? And so what happened is God took on the form of humans and he he actually became human in a way that he had to depend on other humans i think about how, you know especially if you if you've been a parent or been around a, a small child right if you've ever been around one of those little babies you know the cute ones right you ever been around one of those you know that they can't do it on their own can they right and jesus was that jesus was a baby right he was born into the world as a baby and so he had to nurse he had to get changed he had to be uh uh, everything that you do with the baby probably even a little you know you shouldn't be doing that jesus right Could you imagine the family life of Jesus, right? Could you, could you imagine being Jesus' brother? I mean, I've, I've often thought about this, you know. Why can't you be more like your brother? He's God, Mom. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to live up to that, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It'd just be uh, kind of weird being Jesus' brother, you know, and having to live up to that, you know. And I remember uh, after I graduated high school, my sister came into high school. So we weren't in high school together. I just left a legacy, a, a legacy for her, right? Uh, yeah, leg, legacy, right? So I, I left this legacy for her that, that every teacher started the day with like, oh, Goodson, are you, uh, are you Randy's brother? And, and her response became, yes, but I'm nothing like him. <laughs> so James, you know, um, they, uh, they were probably the same way, you know, Jesus' brothers, yes, but I'm nothing like him. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah you can't do that, right? You, right, now Jesus stole that $20 bill out of your purse. Yeah. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Great great point. So our reality is we now are 2,000 years past the fact that Jesus came. So this is our reality. We live in this reality. So this morning I want to tell you a little bit more about joy itself from the Bible itself. Helping us grasp a greater understanding of that which leads us to the type of praise that that David talked about in Psalm 98. You know, the un, uh, unabashed, I am grateful for everything. Doesn't matter what's going on in my life, I am grateful that God has done this for me. And that brings me joy. Okay? So, <laughs> have you ever experienced something so joy filled that it changes your life forever? Now, I, I know I know parents see that in the birth of their children, right? For that one tiny moment, you know, it's like, oh, 
this is awesome. And there's nothing that can compare to this. This is so cool, right? I, I remember this is uh, going to embarrass one of my kids, but they know I'm a pastor and I talk about them all the time. One of my children. So I, I, I missed my, my for, between the military and, and uh, well, in the military, I missed the first two of my children being born, right? And, and I then caught the um, third, right? And so by the third child, you know, <laughs> You'd think that I'd be like used to it, but by my third child, I was, I, we were in the hospital and we're, uh, you know, she gave birth and they let me cut the umbilical cord, right? And when I cut the umbilical cord, uh, well, I don't know if you've ever done something like that. It's a little weird, right? You cut it and there's blood in there, right? And the blood squirted on my shirt, right? And it went like that. And um, so I actually then left that shirt on all day long and probably even into the next day. And I, I remember standing in the elevator and telling some stranger, that's my baby's blood right there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> probably, it, that probably wasn't a great idea. But it, we're in the hospital, you know. <laughs> but that's the kind of joy I'm talking about, right? Something that changes your life forever. I'll never be the same because of my children, right? I, and I see that in my children every single time I see them. It's, I'm grateful and excited to have them, even though there were some, well, not so great times, right? You know, I mean, you, if you ever been, you know, well, all of us have been in our teenage years. We all know that we kind of rebel a little bit there, right? Just, I mean, a little bit. And, um, and then, uh, you know, I still love my children, all of them. I love them very much. They changed my life. Right? That's, that brings me a joy that you just can't explain. And uh, um, I am, I, I'm so excited and happy and joy-filled when I think about those moments. Right? So in week one, we talked a little bit about the difference between joy and happiness. This is a, a recursive. Remember that that um, happiness is based on what's going on around us. And joy is something that the Holy Spirit puts in us that we simply just can't contain, right? When we have the Holy Spirit coming into us and residing in us, we just can't not do anything about it. We can't not be excited and tell others about it. Joy, this fills us with joy in a way that we just can't you know, we try we really try hard to explain to people but in fact this is one of the fruits of the spirit isn't it love joy peace patience kindness so on and so forth right joy is one of those it's something that's meant to be present and even guide us through not only exciting times but also difficult situations that we face in life when life is smacking you upside the head, it's the joy of the Holy Spirit that keeps you afloat and keeps you going. So I want to talk about three things this, during this sermon that, um, that, bring, that, that biblical joy gives us, okay? So, you know, like last week we talked about three things peace does. Well, this is three things about joy. So the first thing. Psalm 98 reminds us that joy helps us to remember. Verse 3, he has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. One of my favorite concepts in all of the Bible is that of remembrance, right? Especially those of you that, like me, have a difficult time remembering things. Right? If, if I don't write it down, that's why I tell people, you know, like if they, they hit me up right before the sermon or something like that, or right before church starts, I'm like, this conversation didn't happen because I'm not going to remember, period. That's just the way it's going to be, right? Unless I'm writing it down, I'm not going to remember the fact that this is going on, right? So, but, so this, this, this whole concept of God remembering, this is just, I love this fact, right? Some of us, we, we can't do that very well. We can't remember some of those things, while others, you know, not so much. Regardless, we, 
We serve a God who constantly remembers his promises. And this is beautiful for us because God remembers what he said. But how we forget his goodness, how we forget his faithfulness in our lives, don't we? So often. And this isn't new, you know, this isn't something that we just started doing, you know, a couple of months ago or a couple of years ago or just, you know, in first world countries or anything like that. Let me take you back to Exodus chapter 15, right? Genesis, Exodus, right? So way back. We're going back quite a ways okay genesis chapter 15 the people of israel had just been delivered from captivity in egypt through the miraculous parting of the red sea you remember that everybody remember everybody see you know they they remember the parting of the red sea right so this is how they got out of egypt and so the the it, the red sea was parted and this is just as god had promised by the way okay so he said that he would get us a get the get the the nation of israel out of uh, out from under the oppression of the egyptians and he did this by going through the red sea right so these people had just gone through the red sea they had gotten over the fact that um that, that they were in Egypt and they were under the oppression of the Egyptians. They were slaves. They were bound. They were, it was not pretty, right? So they get to the other side and they hang out there. And uh, they, they sing a, a song. When they get to the other side, I'm not going to read you the whole song, but it's very similar to, uh, to Psalm 98, right? And they sing this, this song of deliverance. Like, yay, God, you made us free you made us not be slaves anymore woohoo okay so they did that but not long after they begin to complain numbers chapter 11 and that would i think yeah numbers chapter genesis exodus leviticus numbers okay so this is just a part of the history and the people complained, or Numbers chapter 11, and the people complained in the beginning of the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord, the beginning of their, their, their over, the beginning of this 40 years that started, right? So they, they began to complain to the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled, kindled, lit up, right? What, how do you get a fire started? Do you throw some kindling on it? This is the Lord being on fire. He's, he's upset. And the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. Great. We're back on good terms again. So the name of the place was called Tabirah because the fire of the Lord burned among them. Verse 4, that was verse 3. Verse 4, now the rabble that was among them had a strong craving, and the people of Israel also wept again and said, Oh, that we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. Man, that sounds like an awesome recipe, doesn't it? Yum. I mean, if you like fish right substitute that with you know maybe steak right no. they they do the fish so I, that, that's okay right so this is their cycle right this literally happened like overnight yay god oh man yay god oh man numbers 21 and the people spoke against god and against moses why have you brought us up out of egypt to die in the wilderness for there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. What was this worthless food? Manna. God supplied nutrition for them. We're going to die. Here, have this. This will sustain you. This will be all you need. Okay? Now, how many of you have eaten cream of wheat every day, every meal, for 40 years this is what i picture it like cream of wheat right this, I, I don't know if that's what it was or anything cream of wheat are those communion wafers back there um 
I'm not sure. But it had to have been, I, it was enough to sustain them, right? It was enough to give them the nutrition that they need. So from a nutrition perspective, it was, it was perfect. God's kind of like that, right? He does that. So he provides this perfect food for them, and they, they eat it, and it sustains them, but they complain. They complain about it, right? They're, yeah, they're, you're right. They're human. Kathy's, Kathy says they're human. So, but here's the thing. I, I, I know what you're thinking, right? At least I was. How could the Israelites complain when they had just seen God providing for them by opening the Red Sea for them to escape the oppression of the Egyptians? How could they not trust God after that? You know, it, it's easy for us to think that, isn't it? You know, we're 6,000 years or so separated from that point in time. It's so easy for us to say, I, I, I wouldn't have done that in that situation. I would have praised God in that situation. Right? Because I'm awesome and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm totally sold out for Jesus. So I would praise Jesus for the, the food, Right? But if we were in that situation some 6,000 years ago, good chance that we would have reacted the same way, right? Cream of wheat, unflavored, now no brown sugar, no butter, no milk, and that's it. <laughs> and you're eating cream, plain cream of wheat or, or plain quinoa, Right? Quinoa is awesome because it takes up flavor of everything, but if you don't have the stuff to flavor it, it, well, it doesn't, it, it kind of, it's flavorless. Right? Yeah. So maybe our response would have been similar if we were in that situation. But it, it's, it's so easy for us to forget that God is good when our circumstances are not so good. Now let me, let me fast forward to yesterday in my life. Yesterday, <laughs> so our dog is getting up there in years, right? Chooses to go to the bathroom anywhere but outside, right? So we're constantly doing things to clean up after him and things like this, right? So, I mean, he's fine other than that. And so the other day, he jumps up on the bed and relieved himself we have a giant comforter giant big right doesn't fit in the washing machine big right that is one of those kind of things it's nice and thick and you know so we have this comforter right and we can't put it in the washing machine so what are we going to do laundromat i haven't been to the laundromat in 30 years right so i mean it's been a long time since i've been to the laundromat and so we went to the laundromat it, by the way, it cost six dollars to do a load, one load, right? We put, we put our, <laughs> yeah, you're right, yeah, one blanket in this case, right? So we put that in the six dollars. That was just the washing machine, right? And and then we had to take it out and move it over to the dryer. And of course, you know, this is like at seven o'clock on a Saturday morning because we couldn't sleep for some reason past like three thirty or four o'clock. So we're like, oh, all right, we might as well go to the laundromat. So we did. We went to the laundromat. We did our thing. We got the comforter done. And, and you know, it doesn't dry evenly either. You have to pull it out and do this funky dance thing and put it back in. And you have to do that like five different times, right? To, in order to get maybe seven times. I don't remember how many times I actually did it. But that was another like $5 worth of worth of drying to get that done right and so we're finally we're like all right it's just damp now we're just going to take it home and lay it on the bed it'll be fine right so we did that so we did that we we went to the laundromat we then we then we went back home we put that there we grabbed some stuff we came here and we came here and we spent um uh, three hours i think we were here yesterday doing this setting this stuff up and i was arguing with the computer a lot by, by the way, our Facebook link, our live, is broken right now because of something that happened last week. And so I spent all this time trying to get that to work. And 
then finally we're like, you know what? And we're, and we're like, oh, nuts. Let's go to Walmart. <laughs> so we left. We went to Walmart. Y'all know it's no secret how much I like Walmart, right? So we, we got to Walmart and we got the things that we needed. Of course, we went over, we, we, we split up because we needed some things over here and we needed some things over there. So, you know, she went one way, I went another and we were looking for these tablecloths, right? So we're looking for these tablecloths and so she goes over to the Christmas area where she thought the, the tablecloths would be and I go back to the area where, you know, they have the normal, these throwaway tablecloths normally, right? So I go back there and we're on, compl- we're in different area codes, right? Because we're on separate sides of Walmart and we have our, or, you know, we have our stuff going on, and we're 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 having this really good time at Walmart, and we call each other. Hey, I can't find these things anywhere, and um, I, and I I went anti man here. I actually asked where they were at, and they said, okay, they're in this aisle over here. So I we went to that aisle. There they were. That was great, but they were nowhere near where either one of us were. So we went back in there, and so we do this. We're getting ready to check out, and she goes, did you get? whatever i'm like no so we had to go all the way back to the far back of walmart get our thing and come back right so we spend an hour another hour there and we come back to the church right we do our thing we're like no we're done we need to take a nap or something because this is not working out right so we did We, we went back home took a nap and then we're like oh to the church back home right then we had um a, a show choir thing last night right which it ended on a great note but during that time can you can you picture can you get frustrated like i was you know just going through all of that it's like i just spent like six hours and i got nothing done right and i'm frustrated and i'm angry and we're both just like and hungry and we're both just like you know back and forth like husband and wife do right we have a great relationship but every once in a while you know we 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 like to have words so so we we finally get done with the day we get home at after eight o'clock last night and we swung by casey's to grab something to eat right i mean that's just how crazy things were yesterday right in the midst of all of that a few times during all of that right I, we're forgetting God is the one that's doing all of this for us, right? Not, not, he's not throwing all these things in our way. I mean, maybe he is, but God is the one that we're trying to worship. God is the one we're trying to do things for. God is the one that we are, like, setting up the church for and all this other stuff, you know? And we're forgetting all of that. So in the middle of all of it, I stop. And I grabbed Cheryl, and I put my arms around her, and I, and I said, Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we are sorry, and we invite your Holy Spirit. You know, and all this, you know, all this stuff, just, just, just to kind of take that, that breath and relax and remember that God is what brings us the joy, not the trip to Walmart. Not, oh, oh, and I forgot the Christian bookstore we had to go to as well because our communion cups were fermenting back there. Um, <laughs> So I had to pick up some of those yesterday, too. Just take another trip down that way. You know, it's like, oh, what, but I got to eat Wendy's for lunch. That's a good thing, right? Uh, so anyway, so that was, that was our day yesterday, right? And in the midst of all of that frustration and that anger, and, and I forgot. I forgot God in one day. And we, our day didn't start that way. It, it, it went that way, but it didn't start that way. You know, every morning, I have this routine. Every morning, I spend time with God. And I come out of that, and I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling good. Right? And it didn't take long for the day to go to, you know, hell in a handbasket, if you will. But we all do that, don't we? We all tend to forget God a lot, don't we? Yet here we are this morning. Blessed beyond all measure. This is great. I love being here. I'm excited about being here. 
I'm super excited about the visitor we're having a little bit later. There's no kids in here. Santa's coming a little bit later. So, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to meet Jesus here in this place right now. But just like my day yesterday, we all have that selective memory, don't we? Often we think back to our past in certain seasons and maybe we just remember the the bad times, the low times, the ugly times, don't we? Especially if it's something we're going to try and do again, right? If we're going to try and do something again and it didn't work right the first time or it didn't give the results we wanted the first time, right? What do you think? Oh, that's not going to work. Well, I mean, most people think that. Some people don't, but, you know, most people do. Then we get frustrated over that. And then this compounds onto our current situation. We want to do this. We want to do X, Y, or Z, but we've done X, Y, or Z before. It turned out bad, so this is just going to turn out bad, right? Because God can't fix it. God can't make it work. Right? We tend to, we tend to do that. And eventually we need somebody to blame, don't we? You know, as our life goes down that rabbit trail of sad and depression and bad stuff and and thinking about the, the, the past and all that, as we go down that trail, we need somebody to blame, don't we? A lot of times that's God. A lot of times we blame God for that. And yeah, more, often or more often than not, we end up... For the Israelites, they thought back to this dark season back in Egypt, and they thought, man, life was good. They forgot. They forgot about the oppression and whatnot. And, they're in, and they didn't bring that into their current situation, their free situation. It goes to show once again that we as people, we don't have a very good memory and we really forget about God's faithfulness. But the Bible says that God has memory. He remembers. He remembers his promises to his people. Even when we are unfaithful, God is always faithful to his promises. And he gives us good gifts. One of those gifts, the Holy Spirit, brings us joy within us. Point number two. We have joy because of the righteousness of God. We don't have joy just because of God's promises, but also because of his righteousness. Psalm 98 again, verse 2. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. Someone who is acting in righteousness is literally one who is conformed to the will of God. If God is righteous himself, he serves as a model for us, teaching us what righteousness looks like and what it sounds like and what it feels like and what it, what, what it talks like. Most clearly, he did this through the person and ministry of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 1. For, it, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. This helps us to see that by placing our faith in Jesus Christ, we are made righteous. This is not an act that we ourselves do. This is not something that we, we, there is no works righteousness, right? It's nowhere in the Bible. We don't earn our way into heaven. We don't earn our way into righteousness. But rather, this is the work of God in and through us. Because of this, we are seen as righteous in God's sight. But maybe today, you look at the person of Jesus as we read about in the gospel accounts, and you say to yourself, man, this is someone who is perfect. I'm not perfect. Neither was Job. Remember Job? Right? You want to test your, you want to test your, your, uh, your faith and how strong you are, read the book of Job. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright 
one who feared God and turned away from evil. God himself tells us that Job was a man who lived a blameless life. In verse 8, he says, And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord was talking with Satan, right? He says to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil? This is the kind of man that I desire to be. I want to be that guy. I want to be the guy that turns away from evil. But as we said earlier, it's easy to have joy when things are going well in life, isn't it? But what about when the situation takes a turn for the worse? This is exactly what happens in the story of Job. As Satan takes most of the possessions and his family away from him and leaves him only with his wife. Let's see how he responds. Job chapter 2 and verse 10. But he said to her, his wife, his wife, I, his wife was very supportive and said, look, Job, you just need to kill yourself because you suck. Okay, I mean, in a nutshell, that's what he said, right? <laughs> in today's language. So he says to her, his response to her wasn't, you know, anything bad or anything. He says to her, you speak as one of the foolish women would speak. Shall we receive good from God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. This is the response from someone who truly seeks to continue living a righteous and blameless life. But it certainly isn't an easy way to live, is it? You know, like my day yesterday, life is frustrating sometimes. But throughout the day, I took time to pray to God to intervene and bring joy. And at the end of the day, we each laid our heads on the pillows filled with joy at what God is doing in our lives. God can handle our frustrations and pain. There are seasons that we all go through of grief and pain and anger and sadness. We all go through them. But even in the middle of all that grief and pain, we can understand that if we have faith in Jesus, God has already counted us as righteous because of his son. Therefore, we have cause to rejoice, don't we? Maybe this is the very season that you find yourself in right now. You've suddenly lost a loved one or you don't feel why God would allow you to sit in this pain or you're remembering the loss of a loved one, especially at at this time of year. Or maybe it's a job, you know, a career that you thought maybe would take you all the way to retirement and something happened and that narrative has changed and you're in pain because of it. Or maybe you're in the midst of a painful separation. But right there in the middle of your pain, hear me say this, if you know Jesus, you know righteousness. If you know Jesus, you know hope. If you know Jesus, you know comfort. If you know Jesus, you know peace. And therefore, if you know Jesus, you know the source of all true joy. Remember him and his righteousness in your life. Jesus has rescued you from sin and death. Third thing, we have joy because of rescue. Finally, I want to, uh, I want to land the plane here because this is, you need to, this is the last thing I just want to leave with you. Um, I would love to share with you about why we should have joy according to psalm 98 and other books in the bible we have joy because of god's rescue plan for us when jesus christ came to the earth in the form of a child born in a manger as we talked about last week god brought his plan of rescue for humanity even closer than before so back to psalm 98 verse 2 the lord has made known his salvation He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. 
He has announced his victory. And what is that victory? Through the incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension of Christ, the victory is available to everybody. It is there. John 3.16, for God so loved the world. And now because of Christ, there is a way back to that intimate communion with God. What was broken in the Garden of Eden because of Adam's sin has now been restored through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Paul says it this way, For if, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to the condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to the justification and life for all men. This is the promise of all promises. Christ has reversed the curse of sin. He has given us a better identity to be a part of that righteousness. And as the song says, the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love should lead us to a place of rejoicing. As Christmas approaches, we can know that our king has come and rescued us from the trap of sin. Well, we've co covered a lot of ground today from the exodus out of Egypt to the Psalms to Paul and the book of Romans. Through it all, there's one truth that remains the same. The righteous, faithful love of God and his people. It's because of this truth that we rejoice today. It's because of him that we can audaciously sing joy to the world, the king is come. It's important to remember that God's love is powerful enough for the entire world and specific enough for you and your life. He knows your every need, your silent prayers, your struggles, your hopes, your dreams. He is good. And today, I want to invite you into a relationship with him. He is the fountain of eternal and everlasting joy.